Hi, this is Rachel. Let's deep dive into the capability of endpoint traffic policy enforcement feature in Global Protect 6.0 release. Let's go over some of the key capabilities we are introducing with this feature. With this feature enabled, Global Protect will have the ability to terminate malicious inbound connections once securely connected. Admin will have greater traffic policy control to prevent any kind of secure tunnel bypass. Now let's review how the endpoint traffic policy enforcement feature will help our customers with their zero trust network access vision via the simulation topology. As we know, remote users will have secure IPsec or SSL connection to Prisma access or on-prem gateway. An attacker can try to have an incoming connection to remote network endpoints, which is secure via Global Protect. With Global Protect traffic policy enforcement, admins will be able to terminate such connections. Similar controls can be applied for an insider malicious actor as well. Additionally, if a malicious application on the remote endpoints try to bypass the tunnel, then these attempts will be prevented as well. At the same time, the admins will be able to exclude network clogging applications via split tunnel exclude as well. Access to the local LAN network will also be controllable as of today. Let's take a quick look at the configuration for the endpoint traffic policy enforcement. This configuration is not enabled by default. No PanOS code upgrade is required. This feature can be configured under Global Protect Portal Agent App Configuration. The feature will only require dynamic content upgrade and not PanOS. Feature will be supported starting Global Protect 6.0 release both on Intel and ARM-based Windows and Mac OS platforms. This is configurable under Portals. The Agent Settings. Select the required Agent Settings. Under App Configuration. we'll have the endpoint traffic policy enforcement. Here we have different options. No specifies the endpoint traffic policy enforcement feature is disabled. This is the default option. The TCP UDP traffic based on tunnel IP address type enables endpoint traffic policy enforcement for TCP UDP based traffic. If the tunnel is IPv4, this feature applies to only IPv4 traffic. If it is IPv6, this feature applies only to IPv6 traffic. All TCP UDP traffic enables endpoint traffic policy enforcement for all TCP UDP traffic, regardless of the tunnel IP address type. All traffic enables endpoint traffic policy enforcement for all TCP, UDP, ICMP, and all other protocols, regardless of the tunnel IP address. Let's take a quick look at the use cases of the feature. The first use case is full blocking or complete protection. This is achieved by enabling the endpoint traffic policy enforcement feature. Here, DLSA also needs to be enabled. This is the feature for no local LAN access. Everything here goes over the tunnel. The incoming traffic is restricted and local LAN traffic is also blocked. Here is the configuration for the same. We go to the necessary portal settings, go to the agent settings, Click the necessary agent settings. Under the app config, we need to enable the feature for endpoint traffic policy enforcement and set it to all traffic. 
Similarly, go to Gateways. In order to enable complete blocking, go to Agent Settings. Under the Client Settings, select the necessary client config. And under Split Tunnel, please enable no direct access to local network. This will ensure complete blocking, including local LAN traffic and outside incoming traffic. And commit the changes. Here are two Windows machines on the same network. The IP address is 10.2.148.21 and 10.2.148.23, respectively. Here we see when Global Protect 6.0 is disconnected, we are able to successfully RDP within the local LAN machines. Let's enable Global Protect 6.0 now. Now, the RDP traffic is restricted as expected. Similarly, if we try to RDP from a different network, Apart from LAN, the traffic is restricted as well. Here we see that we are trying to RDP into 10.2.148.21 from a 10.5.36.52. This traffic is restricted as expected. This completes the demo of complete blocking. The second use case for the endpoint traffic policy enforcement feature is to exclude network clogging domain, but also not allow local LAN network traffic. This is achieved by enabling the endpoint traffic policy enforcement feature. Here we select the all TCP UDP traffic option. Also, the no direct access to local LAN is allowed. In our case, it is checked. Here, everything goes over the tunnel, tunnel to exclude bandwidth clogging domains such as YouTube, which we have used in our demo. The configuration for the following is network, portals, go to the necessary portal settings under the agent tab, under app, Select the endpoint traffic policy enforcement feature and set it to all TCP UDP traffic. Similarly, go to gateways. Go to the relevant client settings and under the agent tab, split tunnel, enable the no direct access to local network. And under domain and application, type in the necessary URLs that need to be excluded. Here in our demo, we'll be using youtube.com. Here is a quick demo of the same. The IPv4 address allocated to this Windows machine is 10.2.148.21. Now with the curl command, we can initiate TCP traffic to cnn.com or youtube.com using the physical interface which is 10.2.148.21 and it is successful before global protect is connected also here we see we are able to ping using the physical interface ip right after global protect is connected when we try to ping google.com via the physical interface it works because only tcp udp traffic was restricted as part of the enforcement feature. ICMP will still work. But as we see, all other TCP UDP traffic will be restricted, for example, CNN.com. But since YouTube.com is excluded, 
we see that we are able to successfully access it. Here we are trying to access youtube.com via the physical interface and it works. In this third use case, you can use the endpoint traffic policy enforcement feature but still allow local LAN access for resources like printer. The configuration that is done for this is enable the endpoint traffic policy enforcement feature to all traffic. The no direct access to local network is disabled, meaning local LAN access is allowed. We can access local resources like printer in this case. The outcome is everything goes over the tunnel. All TCP, UDP, ICMP traffic goes over the tunnel, but access to printer or local LAN is allowed over the physical interface. The configuration for the following is as below. Go to Portals, select the necessary portal setting, the agent, the necessary agent setting, and under Dynamic App Config, set the endpoint traffic policy enforcement to all TCP UDP traffic. Similarly, go to the gateways, go to the agent, the client settings, and under Split Tunnel, disable no direct access to the network. Under domain and application, exclude youtube.com for our demo. Here is a quick demo of the use case. We have two Windows machines in the same local LAN. The IP addresses are 10.2.148.21 and 10.2.148.23. Here we run the NCAT command. For TCP traffic, and since we have disabled the option to no access for local LAN, the TCP traffic works. Here we go ahead and enable Global Protect. with the traffic endpoint enforcement feature enabled to all TCP and UDP traffic in conjunction with local LAN access being allowed. And we are still able to pass TCP traffic between the two machines successfully. Here we see two Windows machine on different subnets. And we are able to RDP from one subnet to the other when Global Protect is disabled. Now we go ahead and enable Global Protect. And now when we try to pass TCP traffic, that is RDP from, the, from a different VM machine, the RDP fails. Try to access TCP traffic via the physical interface and the curl command fails. Since YouTube is excluded within the feature, we are successfully able to access youtube.com. This concludes the demo.